The following podcast contains strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. My name is Craft Ginger and this is Roll for Discussion, a small podcast where myself and a few others will delve into the multiple topics around the popular game of Dungeons and Dragons. If you have any thoughts, opinions about what has been discussed or topics that you want us to cover, then feel free to post them down below in the comments section. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like and smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell for more. And now, without further delay, we will begin tonight's session. Where do we begin in D&D? This is Roll for Discussion. Joining me in tonight's session, we have the following players. We have Schnitzel. Hello. We have Chadstick. Hi. We have Cerrone. It is I, Cerrone, and welcome to the podcast. We have Jason. Hello, what's up, everybody? And we have Mitch. I am Mitch, Dungeoneer extraordinaire. Guys, I guess the... I guess the the obviously the main question is going to be so where do you start if you are going into D and D? Well, I think the for me personally the best way to get started is find someone that already knows what they're doing. <laughs> find someone with a bit of experience to help get you started. That's not bad. Oh yeah, bad. yeah. Because if I mean if you're like a complete newbie, it, it's like super. It, it can seem super intimidating with all the books and the dice and. Oh my, uh, all the rules and everything too. Yeah, finding like a uh, a local gaming club uh, that if they've got persons there who are hosting uh, Dungeons and Dragons, it's it's not a bad shout. Even if you're not quite confident enough to go and sign up as a player, but maybe you know go along and have a watch, see if send send them a message, see if they don't mind if you just uh, come and observe. And at the same time, there's a whole load of content online. To, to have a look at um, I mean it, it, it's something that you can uh, quite easily get some sort of initial feedback as to whether it's for you but then it's as to uh, whether you feel that you are wanting to go into it more as a, as a player or do you want to run a game maybe not start off with something like Critical Role where it kind of gives like this glorified like super flashy uh uh, production of D and D, which I mean, there's nothing wrong if you like Critical Role or anything, but it's uh, a lot of that is like you know uh, they have a huge budget behind it. And a lot of the times, it's just you know a bunch of bunch of people getting together, rolling dice, and uh, but but you know, if Critical Role could be a good way to like kind of get an idea of what it of what the game is, but not necessarily uh, what the experience is going to be like for every game. Yeah. And I'd add to that to say, not only is it flashy and they've got a high production value, but they're all very experienced players and GM. So and, and not voice everybody. Actors. Hmm? And voice actors. And voice actors. Oh, yeah. So they're they're giving like this this uh, not perfect but idealized version. And what they do is great. I'm not trying to belittle that, but um, a lot of people got into D and D thinking it would be exactly like Critical Role, and that's just not fair because those guys are like really good. They're Sorry. professional storytellers at this point. Yeah, there you go. And um, just going down to your local store, I'd probably try to start with a friend because that can make things a bit easier for people, especially if you're new to geekery in general or geekery in person. Um, and also, I think on the Wizards of the Coast website, I know they used to have it, uh, they have a party finder tool. So like stores who are signed up with Wizards as D&D stores um, will post on there when they've got uh, slots and on tables. So it can be useful to find a, at least a store in your local area, if not people. It's actually really cool. I yeah. don't know how prevalent it is in the UK. And my brother used it to find one. Um, so it, it, there are some, but I, I think it's more of a, a US thing. I mean, yeah, there is definitely um, uh, an option for that. I and mean, uh, if if that sort of site's not working, I mean, Facebook, Discord, you know, they have, mm -hmm. there are so many groups that you can, you can easily find people 
uh, hopefully very fairly local, uh, going into any uh, sort of game store, you know, where they're, they're, they're selling board games and they have like a room in the back where they allow people to come in and uh, play there. That's a great way of meeting people. I mean, it's, it would be, obviously it'd be really helpful if you had a friend who's who obviously gets into that. But if you're someone who's part of a group and there's just no one within that group uh, that's interested in that sort of thing, or at least interested in trying it out with you, then the next bet, bet the next bet would be to I'd say would be find one of these stores or to search like online for these sort of groups. And uh, I, I found the communities like overall like they're very they're all really helpful. Uh, a lot of people are quite willing to like you know get you access to different resources. You know there's I mean when it comes to um, say for instance like getting any of the books you can if you if you're tight on a budget. You can start off very cheap by getting free PDF downloads. That's you know, that's the very basics of it. Um, and obviously, again, with these communities, there's so many people that have such a, a vast history and knowledge uh, behind their belts so they can always get, they can always help you like just get started off like with the basics. Yeah, and even if you don't have like a game store local or anything, a good way to kind of get into, and this is like a, you know, this is a topic for uh, another day, online versus in person, but online D and D. Um, is also a great way to get into it. Um, when I, well, the first game I ever played was I was in college and we had like seven dudes like in my dorm room sitting around. I had no clue what was going on, but um, also going back to, you know, finding someone who knows what's, what they're doing. I had a friend reach out to me, hey, you wanna play some D&D? And we actually played online. Um, kind of gave me a better understanding of like how the game worked and everything. So. Even if you don't have like a in-person place that you can go to, um, in or, or just a place that you can play uh, in person, you know, online is always a good way to like reach out and uh, you know just kind of figure out how the game works and everything. Like you know, why am I rolling this dice or you know what wh what exactly am I supposed to be doing in this game? You know, I, I will say with the access for online. Uh, features has, has definitely helped expand it uh, tremendously. I mean, there's some there's some pretty good ones. I mean, one of my my favourite one is uh, Roll Twenty to use. That's mm -hmm. that's been one of the most effective ways for me to uh, build up a character. I mean, I'd say D and D Beyond uh, you can do it much faster, um, but I feel like to try to uh, fully uh, fully uh, better understand how the character sheet works, I found Roll Twenty was a little bit more. But I know there's a there's a couple others. Um, uh, what, Anyone else know of uh, the other ones? I cannot remember off the top of my head what they're called. I think for me, D and D Beyond is great for when you're just starting out, uh, because a lot of the extra content beyond like core rules and things is behind a paywall. But that means you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to pitch that in a positive light for the first time ever, maybe. Um, <laughs> like because you literally can't see all that extra stuff. That when you get used to the game is really cool. You're 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 looking at the more. Uh, I'm gonna use the word basic, but I don't mean that in any bad way or like relative to power level or whatever. But the more basic or, or simple is perhaps a better word. Classes that help you get to grips with the mechanics of the game. Um, I also agree that Roll Twenty is a great resource, um, and it's uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's really helpful because I know a lot of people have started doing it online using the uh, either a Discord or I think Roll20, you can do a voice thing as well on there. Um, yep. And it's, it is good. And you've also, like in person when you're just starting, you feel like you need to have all the books open at all the right pages. If it's online, you've got that in tabs, so it's much easier. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I would I would agree with you actually. With, if it comes to like, if you're very first time um, learning about D&D, I would strongly suggest Beyond over Roll20. Um, I know that there is a feature on Roll20 when you're creating your character sheets. I think it's called the character... Uh, oh, Schnitzel, you, you were doing it the other day. What was it? What's the uh, feature? Character Mancer. I character Mancer, was that was it. Yeah, that, that made it um, a little bit more of a straightforward guide as to what you were doing, it's, as to like, how to create it. For, especially for someone like me who's very, very new to all this, it was very good um, a character building uh, outlet that I didn't have to all do it myself. It gave me easy step-by-step -step instructions. I also would like to say that when you're starting out in D&D, someone like me that's very, very, very new. I never played D&D before this year. Um, if it was, it was late last year. 
and the number one thing that I've learned is you have to play with people that really, 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 really love to play. Because if you play with people that are not 100% into it, it makes it way less fun to everybody else. If everybody's there to have a good time and not too stuck, a stick stuck up their butt, then you'll have a great time and you will enjoy it. Yeah, uh, I mean, you definitely touched upon something there. I mean, one of the the, the key thing about D and D is to have fun. Um, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bombshell there for for the viewers at home. I'm D&D out. Is about <laughs> fun. Oh my god! There's like, no way. I am. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I was going to say, uh, it sounded like I said the best way to get started is online. The best way to get started is with someone who you, you sort of know at least a little bit and can guide you through the initial parts. Um, and it is about having fun. The key thing about like experienced D&D players, when you meet them, you won't meet the person. You'll meet their character, usually the first time. And their character might be a complete um, Troll? fudger. Um, and you, you, you're sitting there like, how am I going to be spending like three hours every week trying to try out this hobby that loads of people have told me is great fun when <laughs> that guy's at the table, like talk to the players afterwards and like, because sometimes I'll be honest, sometimes the players are also fudgers, but the, uh, <laughs> the thing is a lot of them are playing characters because those characters cause problems. Um, and that's that's more of a, like a, a later next steps role playing thing that we'll t- probably talk about in another podcast. But mm. they um, they're not actually just trying to be fudgers. Mm. No, uh, it's, I think it's you, you, you're absolutely right, and it's it's also where when you're first starting out, some of your players, and particularly on um, as as we've discussed, where they might have had their uh, initial view into D and D. They're sort of trying to find their feet as their characters, and they might come across a bit strong, or maybe not strong enough. And as you say, it's one of those things that after the session, or even before the session, just having a conversation with your players individually, mm. um, as a DM, you you can sort of try and help them gauge how best to approach it. And at the end of the day, it's particularly when you're doing it with a group of friends, um, and even if you're not really, it's you're 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 finding your feet still. Um, and it will take a bit of time to sort of get a bit more comfortable with it. Um, and, and the best way to do that is to have the conversations with your other players uh, and your DM particularly. Yeah, get there early as well. I'm going to shove that in there as a long time, long term GM. Get to your first sessions early when you're a new player because then you can talk to the GM, they can guide you through it. And it means you're there because um, what you really want to do <laughs> as a new player is be on your GM's good side because then they'll be more supportive of you. And a lot of people don't realize how much work goes into GMing. Even if it's from a book, it doesn't matter that all of the story resources are there. You have to learn them. You have to know them. Yeah, and it's, then, it's, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. And then after that, if it's homebrew, you've still got to improvise all of it. You've got to prepare all of it. It's, it's a lot of work. And yeah, they might enjoy it. Yeah, they might do it because they have fun. Um, and some of it do it to torment other human beings into thinking they're having fun. But... It's still a lot of work. So being there on time, being there early, asking if your GM needs any help with something, its even if they say no and they never do, they'll appreciate it. And if that fails, bring lots of snacks. Specifically <laughs> for the GM. <laughs> yeah. It's like a prerequisite, I feel like. I wish my current players would bring me more snacks. I, I get takeout every week and I talk about how I enjoy being a fat person, but never once have they given me anything. If any of you are out there, yes. Hey, can I bring anything? I'm like, huh. Well, let me see what my wife says. Uh, there's um, I don't know if you guys have played um, oh, what's that card game, Munchkin. Um, but one of the ways you can level up is a card that says bribe the GM, and it's just a picture of like an all-you-can-eat restaurant with the GM's name on a on a uh, <laughs> on a chair for him. Um, yeah. Uh, if anyone out there recognizes the voice of Chad Stick as your GM, please take note to be bringing plenty of snacks for your next game, or you could be facing a TPK. And this is a reminder, if you try to complain about my comments on here, you will lose maximum hit points. <laughs> <laughs> no promises, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a previous player of one of your campaigns. <laughs> yeah, but your group, your group did bring food, and uh, it was slightly different because we started online. So, 
Although you could have Ubered it to me, I guess. <laughs> So we've uh, covered sort of like where to go to sort of find a group. Um, I'd say one well, of the next bit, it'd be the, the, the tools of the trade. Now, I did sort of touch upon this about saying like if, before you get books and if you're a bit tight on the budget, you can go online and get some PDF downloads. But I've not actually been uh, very clear as to what exactly I'm talking about uh, as to what you would actually download. So I guess uh, the next bit we'll go over is what sort of bits and pieces would you be bringing in now obviously as a player it's going to be i'd say uh, there's a lot fewer things that you need to bring to the table but if you were looking at uh, joining in as a dm what are the sort of uh, things that you would need to bring in I, I would say as a as a sort of starting point is um whilst it is uh, an amazing opportunity and sometimes it is almost like a kind of romantic thought to create your your own world for your players to to adventure in and, and uh, as we have also mentioned it is a lot of work to, depending upon your approach and i would always recommend to try and get some sort of um supplement be it like the for instance the uh D, D starter set which i also think i can't remember if it's still available online but there there certainly used to be some basic pdfs on the wizards of the coast for like the uh, lost minds of uh Van Delver. Uh, having something that has already been written just takes a lot of the work out and gives you a lot of um, support and removes some of that anxiety about how your players may react if anything's not been covered. Um, yeah. But it, otherwise, if, if you are thinking of going down that route of creating your own world, absolutely plagiarize and steal from everything that's ever been written because there are so many fantastic ideas out there um you can look at things like the hobbit lord of the rings any fantasy book that springs to your mind has an interesting world even if you only take a little part of that and you can use that as a base to build from yes yeah, good idea the uh i mean I kind of like on a lighthearted take on that. I remember the first game I ever DM'd, it was just like, you know, my friend gave me a few basic pointers, like, okay, I'll try it. And then they ended up running into Shrek and Donkey or something. Uh, I think one of them chopped Shrek's head off or something. I don't remember. But yeah, definitely steal some stuff. But um, one thing I would recommend, and uh, if you're wanting to be a DM, uh, there's this. Uh, you, you can get like a little box set of like the books and also they have like uh starter sets like you mentioned uh where it comes with dice it's got a pre-written adventure tells you how to use the book um i would recommend uh even if you're wanting to get into dming i would recommend you get uh the player's handbook the monster manual and the dungeon master's guide as like your three main book if those are the only three books you own for D&D, &D, uh, I feel like that's plenty right there. Uh, but yeah, that, I, I would say get like a starter set or something. It usually will like come with instructions that kind of tells you how to get started there. My my best bit of advice for someone new to D&D &D who wants to come and be a GM is don't. You wanna you wanna <laughs> learn how to play the game <laughs> like you don't like <laughs> that's not that's I'm not kidding. If someone came up to me and was like, I want to start D and D, uh, I really want to be a GM and I and if I said, oh, Okay, great, cool. Have you played at all? And they said no, I'd be like, Don't do it. You've gotta start as a player first. Because then you learn how the players function within the world. And all the players will be looking to you. Like literally that's your job. They say, I wanna do this. They don't even say how can I do this half the time, or they, you know, they'll suggest some really off the wall stuff. Yeah. And I say that as a player who specialises in being off the wall. Yeah, it's like wanting to direct a play and never having seen a play. Yeah. So, hundred percent. If your first D and D experience is going to be a GM, don't. You'll it will be stressful. No matter how good the players are, you will still feel like, oh no, I've ruined everything because you, you, there's so many moving parts. Um, on, a, on, a, on a more serious note, I do echo what Jason said, that the D&D 5e starter set is such good value for what you get. Um, like you get the whole adventure, you get, and it's very, uh, very hand-holdy as a tutorial adventure for a GM. It's very simple stuff, but it's very fun for the players who get involved. 
And once you've done that, you've learned the mechanical aspects of being a GM. So you can then go off and do whatever you want. It you can do start, homebrew. Mm -hmm. It also starts with um, a number of pre-made characters as well. So again, for you as a DM to be able to look through what a, a, a filled character sheet looks like and then assist your players with it, super, super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, that's a really good point, Mitch, because um, if you've had, you know, you've got a few games, like six, I say games, sessions, six or seven sessions under your belt, um, and you feel like you want to run it for your mates or something, um, or if you ever want to start as a GM and you're not using that starter set, pre-generate some characters. Because if you're playing with new players especially, or supporting newer players, doing that takes the most difficult part of being a player out of it, I think. At least mechanically. Hmm. On the on the point of uh, like creating uh, characters, so this obviously is going to fall a lot more towards a new upcoming player. What advice would you guys give to someone who, so they 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 they've got to they've been informed a little bit of the of the basics. They haven't gone into like the full details about all the the many classes of races and uh, subclasses, feats, and all the rest of it. Uh, how would you go about advising someone on, say, like when they're creating their very first character? Don't play a wizard. Play a wizard? No, don't play a wizard. <laughs> oh, don't play a wizard. <laughs> I think <laughs> just don't play anything with spells. <laughs> play something basic, like a fighter or a barbarian or something like. That. We're talking at the same time. I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. You go, you go first. Play something basic like, I don't know, fighter or barbarian, even rogue coaster, but rogue has like stealth mechanics that you might not get used to easily, so um, uh, just like Nathan over here, that we have actually like over here, um, yeah, he played the rogue, but he played as a fighter, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's, that's what's gonna happen if you play like wizard for example, and you put everything in strength. In my defense, that was the first game I'd ever been in, and I thought what would be the best idea is just to run straight into trouble every time, and die. So, you know, maybe <laughs> I love, I love that running into trouble and dying was part of the plan. Yeah, yeah, dying part. I think How we many had. How times did I die in the first games I've ever been in? I swear I died in every single one. I was always the first to die. Well, we had a we had a running gag that in every session in combat you ended up uh, flat on your back to the point that when we changed your character model, it was just automatically lying down. So... <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I finally I finally spent some of my own time and researched a little bit more into D and D, and I was realizing, oh. I am playing the wrong character for the way I'm playing this character. I need to start doing something yeah. totally different, so. Yeah, my, the first time my little brother, uh, he was like maybe 11 at the time, first time uh, he played D&D, he's like, I want to be a wizard. <laughs> do all magic and stuff. I'm like, okay, you do whatever you want. And then he immediately picks a fight with like a dragonborn or an orc or something. And like, my friend is just like, you have six hit points. He <laughs> <laughs> did not turn out very well for him. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I'll yeah, now qualify my point about don't play a wizard. Um, yes. Yeah, so like, that's part of the problem. But the other thing is, the wizard is the most complex, not complicated, but complex class in the, the player's handbook. And it is fun and it's very powerful when you get there. Um, it's also one of the weaker ones early on. I always say, like, I recently, eight months ago, started a uh, campaign for a local game store uh, for specifically for new players, and I pre-generated the characters. I purposely did not put a wizard in, because the way they use spells is so much more... Uh, I'm going to use the word fiddly, uh, but it's not necessarily bad. Like, I like the class. I'm just trying to make that clear. Um, but it's more fiddly for newer players, and all the other... Uh, spellcasters have like it's much more similar how they use their spells so instead I put an offering of a cleric or a sorcerer because they're easier to get to grips with um, so, the other thing about wizards is you literally have to sit down and learn how to use magic in real life that and even the fighter um, you, you, I think it's uh, third level 
uh, you can uh, pick a speciality, so you can go down the route of Eldritch Knight and get some basic spell casting, whilst having someone who's a bit more robust. Yeah, and like if you want to change your class, your GM is probably going to let you. Let's, like you'll just change character; it'll be fine. So there's almost uh, it's almost like a, there's a difficulty learning curve when it comes to some mm -hmm. of these uh, classes and races. So say all right, let's say then you've got someone it's he or she that they're completely brand new to it. If you had to choose three classes or races as advisory to start off with, I think we can agree that fighter is is probably fighter and barbarian are pretty much up there to begin yeah, with. Barbarian, yeah. Mm. Uh, I... so, yeah, go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to bite in. Sorry. Um, uh... I oh, I did it again. <laughs> 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 I, I thought you were going to let me speak. I know, that was. I know. And then, and then the I here noise. is up here. Oh, okay. So, it's, so do you want me to let you finish, or you go? You go. I'll okay. Go after. So I, um, when I have new players, I don't say, "Do you want to play a fighter? Do you want to play a rogue?" I say, "How do you want to hurt the people you're trying to hurt?" Okay. Like, what weapon do you want to use? So they tell me, you know, oh, I want to hit him with an axe. Oh, I want to hit him really hard. I want to shoot him with a bow. I want to be sneaky about it like an assassin. Because they don't know what a fighter does for a completely new player. They don't know what the difference between a, a sorcerer and a wizard is. So asking them how they want to play, and d and is a very combat-focused system compared with other role-play systems. Um, and no, that doesn't mean it has to always be combat-focused. Um, but because it's a combat focused system asking them how they want to fight in combat will really tell you how they want to play um so for example for um schnitzel if he'd been like he chose to be a rogue but really i think he wanted to be a fighter who was quite sneaky um but he didn't know that so he's run in to all these fights and and it's not paid off that well because he's a rogue um whereas if you you know if you offer a simple question to your players about how they want to play that they can engage with then you'll be able to tell them what class they're playing and that's how i do it i uh, yeah i think that's um uh, yeah, it's a very good way of uh, going about it because uh, it's just like you said there's that you you ask them what they want to what they want to do and then you can help narrow it down into what sort of works best uh, for them um as far as uh, races go well, I think human is probably a very good uh, one to go for a standard as you got the, uh, what is it, it's, it's a plus one to all your stats as yeah. you begin with. It's every, very... Every trait, yep. Yeah. So, and there's not, there's not, as far as I can remember off the top of my head, there's not a whole lot of, uh, there's not really much in complications or any, cause any sort of complexity when it comes to the race, whereas I know there's a couple others that have a little bit, uh, a little bit more to them. Half elf. The Definitely most... half elf immunity to charm and sleep effects. That's elf and, as well. And also having uh, low light vision. It's probably the only one downside to being a, a human. Whilst there are a lot of other benefits um, that you have no uh, essentially low light or dark vision, whereas most of the other races tend to have it. Hmm. I I think you know every, every human could bring a torch. Yep. <laughs> you're, uh, you're thinking and expecting a lot of your players. Nope. <laughs> nope, you forget. I make their character sheets when they start, and all of them get a backpack, and all of those backpacks have a torch in. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I might have expected actually... more of you, but... It... <laughs> I aim to disappoint. Well, it wasn't me you disappointed. I think you and, uh, you and the other Jason were having a <laughs> disappoint off. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen two people who get on in real life start a roleplay game and immediately take a powerful and very passive-aggressive dislike to each other. <laughs> <laughs> By any chance, was there anything it involving was there was there anything involving arrows between these two? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's yes. what happened. That's oh, how boy. it started. Oh, so well, we we sort of touched upon this in the last session, and I didn't know, have a clue who he was talking about. So now I'm, I feel like I'm about to hear the other half of it. Let's uh, let's hear this. Let's, let's hear this story. So we we were moving into the area uh, above ground. The, I think it was the bandit camp, if I remember rightly. And yeah, uh, you know, I was doing my job. I had a I had a crossbow, and 
let's, let's put it this way. I was, I was a bit keen and I blew my shot. Um, <laughs> and it, it missed. And as our, as our DM described it, it, uh, it stuck in the wall just above uh, uh, Zanif's character's head. <laughs> also need to point uh, out that all of them when they introduce their character oh uh, that's the other thing i want to say i want to praise 5e D D um because they've got just quickly the guidance on backgrounds and character traits and personalities that you can roll for or pick from and that's really good for new players to say how would my character act because that's one of the hardest things i think for new players like they don't want to be themselves or they, they want to know how they can act and it's a really good guidelines these guys in this ca there was four characters i believe and all four of you had picked the uh, I'm a bit shifty, I don't like other people, and I really trust no one trait. So, when you did that critical miss, like, for Zadef, it was obvious that he would then have to hate you forever. And since he hated you forever, you hated him forever. And I don't think your characters actually had any voice lines shared before that point. <laughs> uh, well, we, we had a couple at the... Um at the mansion before we headed out and uh yeah i don't i don't think that went down too well uh it was as, you. as we were at a eating around like a banquet table and like the rogue disappeared off to see what they could find slash steal in in this mansion he employer. was a sorcerer he wasn't a rogue oh, was he oh he was a sorcerer oh yeah okay. he um created the infinite ammunition catapult by tying a rope to a rock and then using catapult on it <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't have some kind words around the table. I, th I think like, there, was, there, was, there, was, there was an initial like, really, that's how you're going to eat, and why, yeah, why well, are you getting drunk in our in, in our employer's place? What's wrong with you? Oh dear. But we're off topic. We're off topic. Uh, uh, yeah, what were we talking about? So, uh, <laughs> helping people when they first start out in D&D. <laughs> oh, why would you do that? Mm. Uh, right, so, uh, we've covered quite a few bits there. Uh, is there anything that anyone believes that maybe we haven't touched upon yet? Or want to expand upon that we've already spoken of? Well, so, if you start out in person, you can't really fake it, ice, but if you start out online, just don't, don't don't fake the dice. It's just going to take away the sense of accomplishment you get from getting high rolls or low rolls whenever you need them. It just gives gives the game like a boring feel to it. Like everything goes in your favor, nothing goes wrong, everything is going in the like right track. Just yeah. don't feel like a game anymore. Just your own journey. So yeah, that's a, 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 a roll twenty comes in handy. Yes. Uh, uh, that is definitely very helpful. Yeah, with roll twenty, there's uh, obviously there's a there's a chat box uh, on there which will show everyone's rolls. Now, obviously, if this is, I think what's thrown more fun to is if you're playing online but you're using physical dice at home to roll. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're just starting out, please don't be obnoxious. Uh, like say, oh, this is a game where I can do literally anything. Okay. I'm going to murder this entire tavern of people, which has happened to me. Not me, like, playing, obviously, but... Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely not me when I started, no. Uh, no, 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 I did nothing of the sort. Okay. I, um, I, 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 I just like to point out that people might not intentionally realize that what they were doing uh, was wrong. I mean, you, you know, you don't know. If they go to an entire tavern, they can probably put it together. Yeah, possibly, yeah. but I'm sort of thinking back, I think one of the very first times I played, I went into a house and I kind of panicked when a, chi a small child appeared in front of me and I proceeded to knock him out with my great axe and then another <laughs> family member came round the corner and I knocked them out with my great axe and I just got into this repeated uh, flurry of hitting people with my great axe because <laughs> I just, I just kind of panicked and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I it's unintentionally became a bit of a murder home. You murdered an entire family in the home, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think You've changed, man. I You've changed. Played... It was your game. <laughs> I ever played D&D &D with Trafty. Uh, they were, they, he broke into a house, there was a man reading a book, and he just immediately tries to kill him. We thought he was a werewolf, which it turned well, out he was. was. But I wanted to give you the option of 
Oh, he's actually just a misunderstood man. He just wants to sit and read his book. No, kill him. We're going to steal his fairy dragon. I mean, in, in fairness, fairy dragons are cool, and you've got to stick with your conviction, right? If you forgive one werewolf, it's a slippery slope in becoming a, becoming a werewolf sympathizer. Justified. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I I get where you're coming from, um, Jason, on that. Yeah, you, you don't want to... I don't know. I mean, any of you met an experience of, of new players that tend to go straight in it, like intentionally go in to be murder hobos, or do you tend to find this is people that have been playing for a while? I have had an occasion where a, a player went straight in, um, although I it was from my local gaming group, and I, I had a suspicion that they were going to go in hard, let's say. Um, and... Uh, essentially the the only way I could sort of uh, I had a conversation with them after the game but during that situation I sort of made it a bit more obvious that you know there might be consequences to their actions and started to sort of introduce that um, and that can help uh, not control because you do still want your players to have fun and do what their characters are going to do but within your world you kind of just have to point them in the right direction sometimes maybe if they're going to go and do something completely outlandish you can just check with them like you you would know as a as your character you know this, this is wrong right mm -hmm. uh so i agree basically my rule about what uh jason and midge and you were saying crafty is um don't be a dick like <laughs> that's you can be murder hobos as a party if your gm is new don't be murder hobos. They're new. They've created a story for the first time. They're super nervous about it. Don't stab everybody. If you're playing with any new players, don't make them into a murder hobo. They probably want to come and have fun. Don't pick fights about who can do the most damage if your rogue crits the barbarian in the back or whatever with the dagger they've found in some dude's vault. Like, don't compete for who can do the most damage. Have you, like, Don't have a dick measuring contest over it. It, record by all means record have a competition who does the highest damage roll in a in a fight and go for the record but don't have arguments don't say i could beat you in a fight like that's that's what i've seen usually in younger players i'll be honest like between 16 and 20 uh they often have those kind of dick measuring contests but it's not worth it you're a pie your friends just as a new player try to fit in and if you don't like the party that you're with it's not you, it might be just that it's not the right party for you. Yeah, good advice. Uh, Schnitzel, did you have uh, anything else to add? Well, I just want to mention to, I think it was Jason, who said, please don't try to destroy everything you try to touch at the beginning. Well, I'm sorry, but my character in my DMD uh, game I'm in right now is literally his whole thing is trying to do that. So, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I am going against you, Jason. I'm gonna have to, I'm sorry. I mean, that may, may make me a bad player, but I've already dug this hole for myself. I can't change now. <laughs> I'm committed. It's what my character would do. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the meme online, isn't it? Like, oh, it's what my character would do. Your character's a dick and no one wants to be around him. Um, but, uh, but Nathan, I know I've only just met you for the first time, like, tonight. Um, if that's what your character does, that's fine. Like, just make it more than two-dimensional. Um, would be the suggestion. So you can be a murder hobo, but do other things as well. Well, that's that's my plan. I don't want to like give it away too, because my DM is in the session with me. But my kind of plan is for him to learn from the other characters that he could be more than that, because one of the other characters refuses to get any, into any battles. So it's kind of actually funny, because one person is <laughs> trying to start everything, and the other person is trying to like, clean up every mess. So it works out in the end. So hopefully. I can get it to the point where my character actually learns something instead of being one-dimensional. See, that's that's good. That I, that's what I can dig. I <laughs> also <laughs> fantastic <laughs> bluff, Nathan. Fantastic bluff, because your DM's in the call. Uh, uh, Mitch, do you have anything uh, else to add on or elaborate on? Yeah, just on the the point of as a um, as a DM uh, when you're starting out, and particularly if you are going for a homebrew session. Um, firstly, with all the, the, the like the most stereotypical trope, 
don't worry about starting your party in the tavern. Start them wherever you want. If a tavern is easy for you and it works for everyone, do it. But I would say have that conversation with your um, have have the conversation with your players because you want to get an understanding of what are they expecting out of your game. Are they going to want to have the whole game mostly be focused on combat? Do they want some sort of puzzle solving and do they want a lot of NPC interactions? Um, as you as the DM will be playing as all the non-playable characters, um, it's it's a good idea to sort of get a, a sort of rough idea as to what they're expecting out of the game. And then you can cater for, to, towards what their playstyle is going to be. Excellent. Uh, right, uh, before we wrap up then, does anyone have anything uh, left uh, they would like to bring in? Uh, uh, yes. So, it's normal to take it slow when you're playing for the first time, and it's okay to ask for help. Don't just stare at your character sheet. If you want to try to do something new, just ask for, ask for help. There's nothing to lose. Yeah. Or, further on from that, say, I want to do this. What do I have to roll? Like, that's the best way to ask for help, I think. So if you want to do something cool, your DM's probably going to let you, but you don't know as a new player what you need to say, what check you're doing. Just say to your GM, I want to fire an arrow into the cliff face and swing on it to rescue my friend. Um, well, how do I do that? I'll tell you. Um, my, my one bit of advice uh, would be to any people out there um, starting up uh, is is do research. Uh, it's... It, you know, if you if you're once you've you've you know, gone met some people, you've taken or you've gone for a friend, uh, you've got managed to get hold of a book or two, you found a group, you've met a GM, you guys have all had the discussion, and you've tried out a session. After that, before your next session, don't not do anything until the next session. Read through your books, uh, search up online, go over the Discord groups and the Facebook groups talk more with the people that you played with try to gain as much knowledge as you can to help improve on when you play uh, not just so much that it, it helps the the game flow a little bit easier for people so they're not having to sit there while you're waiting looking through everything but it just so that you end up enjoying yourself more because if you know more about what you're doing you can focus more about what it is you want to do rather more than how do you do this And I have stunned everybody into silence. <laughs> On that yeah, great, one. great point. That was amazing. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who came here tonight for this session: Snitzel, Chadstick, Sarone, Jason, and Midge. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed what you heard here tonight, please uh, leave a like, uh, smash that subscribe button, and ring the notification bell for more. Join us uh, for the next session. Uh, guys, if you'd like to say your goodbyes. Goodbye. Good, Good luck with the next session or the first session you're ever going to take part in. Enjoy it and don't be a dick. Good luck. Have fun. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>